Alright. Alright everybody, what's going on? Reggie Edwards from the Front Row Report. I am joined today by the one, the only Emilio from Tower of Power. Emilio, thank you for taking time today out of your uh, busy schedule. I appreciate it. How are you doing? Awesome. Um, yeah, man, you are currently out on the road. You're on the road with Jerry and Steve Miller with, uh, with Tower of Power, man. You're about, we're about a month into the tour. Tell me a little bit about how this tour compares to and li has lived up to previous tours. Generally, we're touring by itself with Tower of Power. We go around the world doing 90 minute shows for crowds. Uh, we work with small clubs and big arenas, you know, and uh, this is uh, all amphitheaters with Steve Miller Band and Jerry and the really opening act. And, uh, so we're seeing a lot of fans that are not really our fans, they're Journey fans or Steve Miller. So making a lot of new Tower Power fans out there, and that's a really great opportunity for us, and we're really enjoying it. Awesome. Yeah, like you said, you're, anytime you're the opening, the opening band, you're going to be playing most likely for for people who came to see um, the headliner or the next band. Um, how has it been um, adjusting to and getting ready for a tour where you know that you're going to be playing for uh, playing for people that maybe came to see somebody else, but you have the chance to win them over and make them transform them into Tower of Power fans potentially. Yeah, I was, uh, I'll be honest here, I was a little bit concerned, you know, uh, before the tour started, just wondering how those uh, type of music fans would receive our music. I mean, we're, we're much more of a soul uh, type of uh, music, and uh, really pleased at the uh, reception we're getting, you know. I mean, we're, we're playing early, like I said, and, you know, people are walking in, and, you know, but it's uh, there's a lot of people there, and by the end of the show, it's all full, and... Uh, they really enjoy it. We're getting a great reception. It's got to be fun, you know, being on stage and watching. When you guys start playing, you know, you may, sometimes you may get maybe mixed reactions from fans. Some fans may be familiar, some fans aren't. And then once you aren't, maybe filling you out a little bit to see exactly what you guys are all about. It's got to be kind of fun watching the faces of those fans and watching them kind of become Tower of Power fans and watching them become acclimated and become comfortable with you as the set goes on. That's got to be really cool and a lot of fun for you to be able to see. Um, oh, it definitely is. You know, I mean, as, as the set progresses, they, you know, they get more and more into it. And uh, that's great. You know, as I say, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to make a whole bunch of new things. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and like you said, you, you, uh, you do play a little bit different style of music, you know, um, the journey is the more, you know, 80s, you know, soft metal, Steve Miller's straight rock. You guys are soul funk, and there's 10 of you guys on stage. Um, how, how much time and preparation does it really take to get, to get uh, a performance of the caliber that you guys do? Because it, it can't be easy sharing the stage with not eight or nine other guys night after night. I'd assume that took a little while to get used to doing, but you guys aren't new to aren't new to the game at all. You guys been in the, been in it for about 44, 45 years now. Talk to me a little bit about what it's like sharing the stage with that many guys. Well, it's kind of all we've ever known. You know, we've always been 10 pieces and uh, we're coming up to 46 years here in August. And uh, the, the only difference in preparing for a tour like this is that, you know, you got to really watch your timing on your songs and because the second one is so long because there's three bands, you know, and so, and so it's, it's a lot of music in one night. And so we go on and we got our set time really well. And it's, it's just great to be looking out at the crowd and see, you know, uh, <laughs> When we first start, a lot of them are kind of looking at us like, wow, this is different, you know. And by the end of the set, they're like, yeah, <laughs> you know, this is good. So, awesome. So it, it works out really well. Awesome. Well, I mean, the style of music you guys play, you, you, you can't help but enjoy it. You know, it, it's fun. It's fun to listen to, fun to dance to, fun to move to. It, it's, it, it's, it's not hard to get into. And when a band is good at it, they're good at it. You know what I mean? Um, you guys have been doing it for a while, so you've had a lot of time to perfect it. And I, I, you know, I'll be at the the 28th here in Indianapolis, and I'm sure that I'm sure that that's, that shows in their performance and everything. You guys uh, still uh, still maybe getting used to the, uh, having Ray as the front man as the new singer. Came in uh, 
was it New Year's Eve 2013? Uh, what was the transition like um, getting used to having him at the helm? Well, he's been here six months now, and, uh, you know, he, oddly enough, he's such a good singer that if you right from the beginning, you know, we, we knew we really had something special, but, you know, in the six months, he's just grown tremendously, and the crowd really receives him well. He has a, a really comfortable way about him, the way he talks to the crowd, you know, he doesn't seem like somebody who's trying to work them, he's, he's more like, you know, uh, just saying, you know, Boy, we're all having a good time here, you know, you know, and their natural response is, yeah, we are. You know? So uh, it's pretty comfortable, you know, he's just getting better and better every night. So uh, it's been really great. Awesome. It can be really hard when, you know, when the when the singer of a band changes, one guy leaves and a new guy comes in. Some bands, it takes a long time for that transition to really take effect, and a lot of bands never really completely recover from it. So it's really good to, to see and to hear and know that that transition was an was a smooth one and that it's it's going over with the fans as well as it has because um, it can be tough sometimes that's not an easy transition to make um was it easy you know making that transition for you and you know bringing ray in to fill that position or was it something that it was like i don't know what we're gonna do um how you know, i've done this a lot i've done this a lot of times and uh you're right. You know, most bands, you know, a singer makes or breaks them. But, you know, we, we started doing this type of thing, changing singers and various other musicians as well, you know, many years ago. And it got to the point of the Tower of Power where our fans just, when they heard that we made a change, whether it was a new organ player, a new sax player, a new singer, a new guitar player, whatever it was, they started to get excited when they heard we made a change because they knew we were getting somebody else really good. You know, they knew that we got good people. So in that respect, our fans are very forgiving and they're very sort of encouraging about new members. But the thing with Ray, you know, Larry, our previous singer, had been with us for 13 years and he was very good. But he gave us notice way back in February of 2013 that he was going to finish out the year. So we had a long time to look at a lot of singers and uh, by the time we made our choice with Ray Green you know we felt pretty confident that we were getting a really good singer and uh, as soon as we did that first show you know on January 1st of 2014 we knew we had something special awesome it's, it's good to know that he kind of gave you guys those a lot of times those things are like a blindsided hit to the back of the head you, you don't see him coming and uh, you're kind of sure. left. Uh, you're kind of left wondering what you're gonna do. You know, uh, it's good to know that he that he went about it in the right way. Because so many times now bands don't do that. Um, what what is besides the uh, the response from the fans? What is something about the about being on this tour that you didn't really expect? Something that's happened along the way, or maybe the experience that you've had that has really stood out in your mind so far? Because at this point in the tour, it's about a month in. This is about the time that a bit that you really start to hit your stride and things are really firing really smoothly and uh this is like the the bread and butter of the tour kind of with a big tour right in the middle um what's really stood out so far and uh really made an impact on you so far with this one i think the the biggest thing is that as i said before you know we just I wasn't so sure we were going to get over quite as well as we are, you know. I mean, it's a journey show, you know. People are there to see journey. Right. Steve Miller also has countless big hits, so there's going to be a ton of Steve Miller fans, you know. But you know, we're kind of not in their league, you know. Those guys are the big top ten guys, you know. But we have a, a legacy, you know, and a reputation of being uh, a very musical band, a very high-energy live act, and... Uh, I just was really pleased right from the first show that we did in San Diego when we started the tour at the response that we're getting. So uh, awesome. that, that to me is the biggest surprise for me is that, you know, it's not quite as hard. I thought we might have to work them a little harder, you know, but right. uh, they, they've just been, they've been ready to go right from the beginning. And I think Ray Green has a lot to do with that because he basically says, welcome to the party. You know, we're so glad to be here with Steve Miller Band and Journey. And are you ready to have some fun? And of course they are, you know, right. exactly. <laughs> and uh, that kind of opens the door and then the night just proceeds from there and gets better and better so uh, 
by the time we leave, you know, we get a great response, and that's that's what really concerned me before I came out. And now that I've been out, I've already done one leg, and I'm, you know, well into the second leg of the tour. It's like, yeah, I know every night that we're going to get over really well, so that's great. Awesome. So after the tour is finished up in about a month or so, I think, what is on the horizon for Tower of Power for the rest of the year? It's a big year. 2014 is just a, it's hard to believe it's halfway over already, but it is. What we, what can we expect from you guys this year? Well, I'm, we're going over to Europe, you know, uh, for a big tour of, uh, before the year ends. And then uh, just some more touring throughout the States. Uh, I'm trying to finish this record. I'm doing an all-original uh Recording uh, with Tower of Power, and uh, I'm doing the, I'm doing the Michael Jackson method this time. I'm recording way more than I need, and then picking the best twelve. So I've recorded thirty songs, and uh, it's just uh, a lot of work. You know, doing it between tours, so I don't expect to be out anytime soon. But hopefully by the end of 2015, awesome. and uh, it's coming out so great. And I've already recorded Ray Green and five of the tracks, and he just killed it. So I'm, I'm really excited about the new record, and uh, we're just going around touring, doing our thing, and traveling the world. And uh, very blessed to be doing that. Awesome. Awesome, Emilio. Thank you so much for taking time today. It's been fun. We will see you on June 28th in Indianapolis at the Clips, Clips Music Center with Journey and Steve Miller. Obviously, you guys are going to put on a hell of a show as well. Looking forward to it, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. We'll see you there. Sounds good. Take it easy. Bye-bye.